Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Ultimate General American Revolution, the newest game out by Game Labs, the developers behind Ultimate General, Civil War, Gettysburg, Ultimate Admiral, Age of Sail, I led with the best ones, <laughs> and then Ultimate Admiral, Dreadnoughts. Uh, this is a new game out which takes place during the American Revolution and allows you to fight through that revolution as... Well, eventually, either the Americans or the British, uh, but at least initially right now, the game has just entered early access as of a couple of weeks ago. Well, not even a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks, a week and a half ago. Um, but right now, the game just has an American campaign. This is a closed early access, if you will. What I mean by that is the game is currently only for sale through game labs website it will eventually come to steam i believe they're talking about sort of middle of next year as the early access is further along um and so definitely a work in progress but we're going to go ahead and play this game today now i've done four videos on this series before or this game before but we are going to start a brand new campaign based on the lessons that I have learned from playing this game. Um, I was playing through it sort of in a first look previously. Things were fairly rough. I think I've learned a fair bit about how you can play. And they've also made some pretty nice quality of life improvements, adding post-battle screens and other things like that. Uh, so I think it'll be a more interesting look if we take a look at the game. Um, some of you had asked in the previous series if there is sort of a, a sandbox option for battles. There's this, sand there's this um, skirmish mode here where you can choose to fight different battles on uh, on different sort of maps. You've got Brandywine, you've got Camden, uh, Precious Cargo. So I guess these are kind of historical-ish battles um, that you can play in, in sort of a sandbox or, or skirmish mode. But we're going to play the campaign, which is basically we're George Washington, right? So we get through this little intro story. We get the whole sort of Monty Python-esque graphics. Still just the one option to play as the Americans. Um, we'll name ourselves Matthew Butcher just to kind of go along with things. Child, I, took on much I am going to lean into the perception option. I am a big fan of ranged attack, especially based on what I know now. I think that'll be even more important. So in that sense, we are going to focus on perception, uh, which the, the best option here, I think, is is dominance. At the age of 11, I lost my father. So again, we'll keep we'll keep leaning into perception, but as much as we can, not all of the options we get in the story include that. Plantation management. So we'll go with command aura. I think it's important to have uh, sort of a, a strong influence over your troops and and whatnot, and effective influence over your troops. Uh, we can do shut everybody else out, which is an endurance and charisma hit. We can do depression, which is an endurance and willpower hit. Uh, and we can do pessimism, which is a negative 10 endurance hit. I don't want to do endurance because that or too much because I'm assuming that influences, well, it does influence efficiency and also um, influences unit condition, which I'm assuming is stamina. Um, I think the best balance here is probably depression here which influences endurance slightly and willpower slightly as well. Willpower is currently our best trait. It influences morale regeneration um, and decreases unit morale damage. But I think, you know, taking a 10 hit to endurance, I just can't take that kind of a hit against the stamina. And then charisma, I, th I feel like charisma is important. It influences melee attack damage. So that's, that's important too. So we'll go with, we'll go with depression. At the age of 20. I was appointed commander of the Virginia militia, in part due to my organizational talents. Tensions over control. And again, these are traits that will influence your character's influence on the strategic map because this game does have sort of total war aspects where you fight on a strategic map and then also total war aspects where when units collide, you can fight on a tactical map. We said we were going to lean into firearm stuff which 10 willpower is morale regeneration so we're going to do the firearms trait we fought well capturing several french forts and in spite of some setbacks we succeeded in my attempts to secure a commission in the army were thwarted by english officers with little respect for my abilities so i decided to resign my next steps were 
All right, so these are more important than I realized initially when I first played through the game. I didn't really know what I could use money on. I didn't really know what I could use reputation on. I only kind of figured that out later. Um, I think either reputation or money could be useful, but uh, we're going to go with the money option here, marrying a rich widow uh, to set up, set us up nicely to be able to kind of upgrade the quality of our troops more quickly. Afterwards, I ran for and was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses. In 1774, I was elected as a delegate to the First Continental Congress in Philadelphia. There, I helped secure. Um, give me, give me the recruitment. Like, I the the muskets will be nice, but I can buy those with the money I just got. Privateers, I really don't feel like having an extra warship is that big of a deal. I know some folks say it is, but I, I really don't. Even if I get two ships when I take Newport, I think it is, at the end of the day, two ships versus five or six British ships are not, is not going to go over well. So we'll go with the additional Tensions militia unit to give me a stronger point. ground force. In the future, a confrontation will break out, and I will have to use all my experience to fight for the independence of the colonies. Okay, so there you go, Matthew Butcher. We're going to go with the same portrait, the portly old man uh, from the previous one. We'll stick it on normal difficulty. You can see at the end of the day, 59 intelligence, which is generally okay. I think increases our line of sight range. Uh, radius also increases ranged attack damage. Perception is 62, which influences ranged attack efficiency. That's our second best trait. Endurance is important for condition, which is uh, my Achilles heel in the previous version. So, you know, all these stats are pretty decent. Nothing's great. Nothing's terrible. Willpower is the best at 66 out of 100, uh, but nothing's below 58. So pretty balanced character is what we ended up with. I wonder how meaningful it would be if you went over the top on just focusing on like only one thing right we were trying to do perception but there's only a couple of things you can do that influence that uh, but if we just did all in on like stamina or all in on charisma like what would that look like all right so it is april 18th 1775 this is sort of the same map that we saw before just sort of the new england area the british have a have a strong force at boston at the start of this they also do control providence newport uh, and Salem, we control Portsmouth. Oh, and they also control Fort Stevens. We control Portsmouth and Hartford with garrisons. And then we also control Leicester here, but there's no troops there at the moment. Our two militia regiments are sort of down here near the middle of the, the western edge of the map, a 480-man regiment and a 479-man regiment. I didn't mention this before because I didn't know, but these are fusiliers, uh, which are basically regular infantry or as close to regular infantry as... Uh, the Americans have at this moment. I guess that's why they're brown jackets. Um, we're going to lean into discipline there. Uh, but uh, these are, so that makes them much better troops. So like when you click on these guys, I don't know if I can actually, here, let's do this. So when I click on these guys, you can see here their efficiency of this. Actually, that's that officer. There is a way to see. I know I don't have to go into the battle to see their actual traits maybe I do but in any event we'll take a look at that later just kind of clicking around on things right now I know there's a way to see it on the screen and it's really bothering me that I'm not. Anyway. Okay. So what we could do, what we're going to do first off here is, you know, I was watching, I think it was Jackie fish, but um, he sort of concentrated everything on a sort of speed run drive for Boston. That feels a little gamey, but I also do know that like you can't let the bridge have too much time. And so what we're going to do here is we are going to make a drive on Providence and Newport. We know that we are going to get orders to basically take those locations. So we'll get orders to that effect. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move butcher uh, and his 900 or so soldiers directly on Providence. We're also going to go ahead and get these troops in Hartford. Uh, we'll upgrade them because apparently they're also decent soldiers too. Although I, I think they're not 
regular army. I think they're militia, uh, so they're not as good. We'll also have them concentrate here over Provi on Providence as well. And then what we'll also do here is we have a four out of five limit on our army size. Now, I believe we'll get a free unit after the Battle of Concord, which will max out our army uh, size. So what I'm going to do immediately is rather than wait, I'm going to go ahead and go into Hartford and I'm going to go ahead and raise a new unit and it'll be a militia regiment here. So we will raise a new militia regiment at Hartford. Um, I don't know who the best officer is for this. Like Richardson's our best officer, but I think I'd rather assign him as the quartermaster or something like that. And you only have so many officers that you're given initially. So I think we'll go with Trevor Noel and then we'll go ahead and make this unit as big as we can. I think we do actually have some artillery in um, the stockpile. So we're going to go ahead and make this three companies of militia and then one company of uh, artillery. Here's where you can actually see it, by the way. So you can see militia has a, a one melee, one firearm, one reload, two speed. Uh, meanwhile, Minutemen are actually better at shooting. They're a smaller unit, 100 men rather than 150, but they've got a seven firearm trait rather than, you know, rather than the one here. They've also got an eight reload. So these guys can actually fire pretty quickly um, and could be really useful in a combat situation where you need to rain fire down on the enemy. The problem is they're much smaller, 50, like 50 fewer men in a company, um, and they're very vulnerable as well in melee, although I guess... I, they're not they're not any more vulnerable than militia according to the stats but when you got 50 fewer men throwing muskets and bayonets it does come it does come back to bite you so we'll go with we'll go with the three companies of militia and then the one of artillery in this regiment um, it's going to cost a 62 gold 80 muskets one galloper gun and one officer so we'll do that i think i'm assuming we'll raise more than just the one gun it'll probably end up being four but i think we have four in in our stockpile as it is anyway so we'll have to take a look at that. But I do believe we have four guns in our stockpile. Now, I can't view our stockpile as far as I'm aware in any way at the moment because I don't have the re requisite technologies unlocked. And I can't really do anything about that until after we are promoted to army sort of commander. So right now we're just going to kind of march and wait. We'll have the Battle of Concord trigger here before too long uh, while we start moving those troops. Also, we do have to keep the new militia unit in Hartford for a time so they can draw reinforcements um, from the uh, from the game, I guess. Fort Smith, do these guys have more than one company or is it just the one? It is just the one company. But rather than leave these guys hung out to dry up north, we'll go ahead and move them south to Leicester. Somewhere, le somewhere we can actually do something with them. I also do believe that marching on roadways reduces the amount of um, conditioning you lose. The problem is I wish the game had like an actual follow road command because I think that would be incredibly valuable, but it does not right now. So there's that. So my goal is going to be to take Providence because we're going to get an, an event that's going to trigger telling us to take Providence for extra reputation. And you can see I've got a 50 reputation up here on the upper left. We can use that uh, to do things in the research and development, which I did not know about or, or didn't notice initially when I first played. But um, we'll have to wait for the actual option to do that to open up when we get promoted. So you can see our boys are slowly moving toward Providence. They are losing conditioning by doing that. You can see the influence on weather and condition which is influencing how quickly that reduces. All right, now we've got the Battle of Lexington conquered. I could skip this, but reputation is really important. So getting a 10 boost of reputation is useful. Also, if you win the battle, I believe you get a free unit. So even though we're at our max five out of five regiments, you can be given units above that. You just cannot raise new units above that. And so I can't raise any new units, but I can be given new units if I win this battle. So we need more troops badly. One of the biggest problems we had in our previous playthrough was we were just always outnumbered by the British and we couldn't stand toe to toe with them and we just kept losing battles. So I do think it's very important to, uh, you know, to not just keep losing battles. Um, we've already fought this battle in... Uh, you know, on the channel, so apologies, I guess, for doing this again, but I am going to do this again. We're going to be a little bit more aggressive with our Minutemen, sort of advancing on the enemy to try and slow them down a bit. 
So we'll kind of advance these 70 militiamen here or Minutemen here on these British troops, which are, you know, currently in a column formation that allows them to move more quickly. This will force them to deploy into a line. We'll fire a volley. We'll kill a couple of, of redcoats here. And then we should retreat, although some of the troops are moving toward the enemy. The goal here is just to delay the enemy, make them take as long as possible to come up because this is a battle where the, uh, the continentals or, or, you know, the, the, the Americans, if you will, uh, will end up getting about 4,000 troops. The British only get about 1,900, I think, or maybe it's 1,200, but you outnumber them very heavily by the end of the battle. Uh, the problem is you got to actually, you know, survive long enough and you lose this battle if the enemy takes this objective here. So this is basically representing a magazine of, of ammunition. And uh, obviously your objective is to, to hold that location uh, throughout the battle and to uh, delay the red coats as much as you can until your reserves come up. We're going to go ahead and try and force these guys to deploy. The British do like to use melee tactics when they outnumber you heavily like this, which makes sense. So as much as you can slow them down and avoid meleeing with them, all the better. So we've got a little bit of a firefight going on here. We are losing casualties or taking casualties, as you can see here. So I can actually issue a hold command, which will increase my cover by 15%. The problem is... I don't really want my troops to hold too long. I'd rather they, uh, you know, retreat and survive. Meanwhile, we've got an additional two units of militiamen coming up here. So we'll go ahead and deploy them onto these shield icons near the objective. The shield icons represent basically defensive positions uh, that you can hold and that you get a bonus for fighting in. you can see these reserves are sort of steadily coming on, on the map. But the British have deployed. Oh, go ahead and retreat. Looked like the enemy was starting to charge us, so I, I told my boys to go ahead and retreat. 71 cover is pretty darn good, though. That, that will definitely make sure that the enemy doesn't uh, do anywhere near as much damage as they could. But you've got to be careful with these types of units. Again, like, getting the hold, the hold trait will definitely reduce the casualties we take, but it, it is more likely to result in our troops ending up in a melee we don't want them to be in. You can see they're obviously losing considerably more men than they are killing to this point, but it is buying time. The British are, they haven't even advanced to this farmhouse yet. And I don't know if that's like a gamey thing or not, but when you hit the fallback icon, the enemy's charge immediately stops. That feels a little bit exploitive of the game, I would say, but... You know? Yeah, every time I hit fall back, the British stop their charge. I don't know how much longer these, these militiamen will, or these Minutemen will hold out, but this is, this is the most success I've had, at least in terms of delaying the enemy, uh, taking these units out. Normally they die much more quickly. So we've got a nice defensive position around the objective I'm not a big fan of like hey what does the system of the game do and let's exploit that for our, for our own ends I kind of it seems to have discovered on accident that's how it treats the fallback command I mean anybody can play how they want to play but I don't find tremendous enjoyment by min-maxing actual systems of games. So, whatever. Meanwhile, these units are probably about to disintegrate. They've been uh, taking a ton of casualties. But we've got more troops coming in. 100 more militiamen here. 122 here. So, feeling much better about our, our current position than I did before. Meanwhile, one of these Minutemen unit has been completely routed and they're running off the map. These guys are retreating. I don't know if they can be reformed. You can see the blinking white. And then this new unit of... You guys going to shoot? 
of Minutemen here in this wood line has 77 cover as they blaze away at the enemy. All right, meanwhile, those two, we've got multiple units of troops all coming up now. Four more companies of soldiers. Oh, shit. I wasn't paying attention, and this Minutemen unit ended up in a melee. So they won't last long. We had those two companies last for a good long while, and, and they, they I think they did a good job of putting up a, a strong fight against the British, but now the the third company there was shattered and driven from the from the map pretty easily. Can I issue a hold command to troops in trenches or in forts? No, not when you're actually in the... All right, so I, when I hit halt, they left the actual defense of work. So it does not appear to be how the game works. It doesn't just let you hold while you're in a locale. All right, so the enemy is approaching the actual objective here. You can see there's, there's a melee going on here. We outnumber the enemy that's charging into that fortification here on the right at least the first company that was charging in outnumbered them it looks like adjacent units do move in to try and support so if you're on a defensive position and the enemy charges the friendly unit to your right in the same defensive position you will charge in and defend them oh god All right they are really honing in on this right flank heavily and also on the left they just routed our militiamen there all right so i just can committed a huge percentage of our forces into a melee on the right flank of our line but I think we're going to win that thing. That was actually fairly dicey there on the right. Meanwhile, on the left flank, that melee went our way. I'm kind of surprised if we really are level one. Like if these units really have that bad a melee, then why are we so good at it? In, in some situations where the numbers are fairly even too, right? All right, so some of these units pretty badly shot up. The good thing is this is basically a tutorial battle, so it doesn't really matter how many men we lose here. It, it won't influence any of the units on the strategic map. Meanwhile, we've got another 750 troops coming in. Actually, a thousand. Okay. Are they going to destroy this unit over here? They did. All right, so that enemy unit, the 23rd foot, was destroyed. At least a company from them was. charge you get a little bit better conditioning if you can make it there I don't why are you swinging way right okay. all right you guys outnumber them more than two to one Got decent conditioning there, so moving on the charge. Conditioning is really important to how well you melee. Now, numbers matter too. Outnumbering the enemy five to one is gonna go a long way. Where are you going? Just trying to get yourselves shot to pieces and killed?
Right, I don't know why you're fighting at that close range, but we'll bring other troops up to help you. Go try and take those wagons. Meanwhile, all of our gaggle of reinforcements have arrived here on the left, so we're going to send them in on a really long run and charge. Yeah, one of these units is driven back. Some of these units are pretty well rested now. All right, multiple enemy units have surrendered. a large number of our troops I think that that should about do it for this battle all right so the enemy is basically completely either running or destroyed all right, the wagon retreated off the map we didn't get it captured I'm assuming these guys will be captured and just two more enemy companies yep they're surrendered these guys will probably get it off the map we'll go ahead and speed things along they stopped and fired a volley how well undisciplined before being destroyed and there you go now we just gotta wait 23 more minutes for the scenario to end not 23 real minutes but you know Time compression, go, go, go. Can I select multiple units? No. Huh. You can see the uh, enemy POWs with their little red uniforms here. So what is that? 120, 135, 169... 199. Is that 199 POWs? Looks like it. Not exactly reflective of the historical battle of uh, Concord, but whatever. We could kill them. With the click of a button, we could kill them all. But we won't do that. So they have four times our melee and five times the firepower of our militia units. So, and, and also eight times the reloading speed. So considerably superior to them. Now the, the militiamen or the minutemen reload at the same speed and have a better firepower. So the minutemen can actually outshoot them. But if the enemy charges your minutemen, then you're toast. So that's an interesting consideration when building your, uh, your army. Meanwhile, 1,200 enemy troops, 3,100 continentals we lost 700 men they lost 1072 so obviously a considerable advantage for us in terms of the casualties as well now again that doesn't matter at all on the strategic layer it gives you prestige it allows you to raise a free unit but it doesn't actually influence the the campaign otherwise um you know the casualties don't matter the all of that stuff doesn't matter we do get a thousand muskets for fighting and then we do get the 350 man unit under lee uh, but otherwise, otherwise it doesn't matter. Still, a free regiment is worth playing that battle. I don't care how much time you might save. 100% worth it. And um, and yeah. So let's bring these troops toward Providence. We're going to go ahead and try and form an army up here under yours truly. And then I think we will get the commander-in-chief command here shortly after this battle. Also, our Hartford unit is being raised it isn't quite to full strength yet, but it's being raised. So there's Lee's boys. Let's form these guys into a brigade. 
So we've got a brigade of 900 of the Fusiliers, which are sort of the regulars. And let's go ahead and move on Providence. So we'll outnumber the enemy almost six to one. So we're starting sort of the siege process. I don't know what the game does in terms of how it decides when it actually wants to, uh, you know, allow you to fight a tactical battle. In the case of Providence, it does not appear that it is going to do that for us. So we are going to let the game sort of simulate out the siege on the strategic map as these casualties are influenced or in, influenced or, or impacted. All right. So we do, I don't have enough gun. I can't do anything about that yet. I was going to say, I don't have enough guns, but I can't do anything about that quite yet. Meanwhile, you can see we're consuming some ammunition here. The morale is dropping a little bit by fighting this battle. Our condition is going down ish, but the enemy's lost about 40 men. You can speed things along if you want. So we can drive this into a melee by double clicking here. So I can charge my militiamen forward. Looks like Lee was killed or wounded. I guess we'll send in the uh, regulars too. So there you go. We're routing the enemy. Benjamin Lee, I guess, was killed. Meanwhile, it would be great if we could destroy Patton's garrison here of Providence. We have 14 days to capture Providence per the per the objective. So we're going to move Lee toward Providence and then we're going to move the other elements down toward Newport. Meanwhile, we were just made Commander-in-Chief of the Army. So let's go ahead and pause here. With being made Commander-in-Chief, the headquarters option opens up, which now allows us to start doing things. So you can see this is yours truly over here on the left. Um, we have, this is sort of where you have your commander and your headquarters. Your Commander-in-Chief has its own research tree of all different things you can do to get better units, raise new units, get new generals, influence ammunition, influence experience, all that kind of stuff. It's a big, long tech tree. But in addition to that, you also have subunits in your headquarters. You've got a chief of intelligence, an artillery chief, a quartermaster chief, a chief engineer, and a chief of the Navy. However, you have to research those individual departments in order to open those up. And each one of those has its own tech tree as well, which influences things. Um, and also, depending on which ones of these you've researched, it'll open up other screens in the strategic management side of things. So engineering opens up construction management and production management amongst all the colonies. Quartermasters opens up a market, which allows you to buy weapons sort of on the, on the market rather than having to produce them. It also unlocks colonial management, which influences your management over the colonies. Um, and so I think quartermaster is the most important. Um, frankly, it's, I didn't go that route last time I played the engineering department. And so that is one of the major reasons we were having so many troubles in our previous playthrough is we went with engineering and then that meant that we didn't get more troops. So the quartermaster increases the sort of army cap size limit up to like 15. So you can keep raising new troops when you have the quartermaster department unlocked. Whereas if you don't have it unlocked, you can't raise new troops because you're at six out of five, right? Um, and so I thought engineering would be really important. It can be, but I think quartermaster is definitely, if you're playing this game, quartermaster is what you should be doing uh, initially. That seems to be kind of the obvious thing. Um, I can't raise more generals. Somebody said, hey, you should do that. I can't do that right now. So anyway, so we've got, we'll leave one of these regiments, Lee's regiment of 390 or so militiamen to take Providence, and then we'll move the other troops south to assault Newport. The enemy force there has 240 men plus 174 man garrison, which just fled there. And then I also now, well, we haven't done the quartermaster department yet, but I, I do need more guns. It looks like the artillery down there is maxed out, or we don't have any guns for that. So, all right. So are the enemy is coming out of the city to fight me. Still don't understand why this isn't triggering a tactical battle that I can fight. In any event, the garrison of Newport came out to fight in the open field, and that's going to help us even more, I would think, with an open field fight. Sutton, the enemy is routing. Our militiamen routed, too. 
thought our regular-ish troops are not retreating or routing. Is it because we're not all part of an army? No, that's not the issue. Also, Lee, go back and take Providence. Don't let the enemy retreat right there. Looks like we've got another fight looming. They're going to retreat right back into Providence, aren't they? Fuck. Oh, nope. They're retreating past Providence. Lee's boy survived too. They're all going to move back toward Hartford, aren't they? All right, let's get these boys up here. Let's do this. Let's split this force and send one of these regiments up here to take Providence while the other takes Newport. Why no one is taking Newport, I don't know. Meanwhile, they have enough experience now to unlock the second perk, which we're going to go with firearms training. Plus 10 firearms, plus 5 efficiency, plus 10 reloading speed. Okay, so those two units retreated and routed toward Middlesbrough. Meanwhile, Providence is being taken. All right, so Newport has fallen. We're going to push these troops up to Providence, though. There's no reason, I don't think, to maintain a garrison at Newport. It could be useful, I suppose, in a if they're going to launch an amphibious landing against an unoccupied city, Newport would be vulnerable. It also has a port. It's kind of important in that sense. But for the moment, anyway, I, th I think it's fine, especially since we're going to get a warship there. Um, we get a, what, 14-gun schooner, the USS Obedient. Uh, so that'll be nice. Meanwhile, now that we took Providence, let's go ahead and send these troops into the garrison there so they can draw reinforcements. Let's also pull the 450 new troops we just get, got at Leicester out of Leicester. The game gave us a new, a new regiment there, so we're going to go move them to Providence. And then we're also going to move troops that we have at Hartford also up to Providence. So we're going to consolidate all the troops we can at Providence. And I'm assuming I'll get the capture Providence thing trigger here momentarily. I don't know what you do about a, a an officer who's lost. If he's just wounded or if he's dead or... Also, this militia unit, let's go ahead and pull them forward too. It says they don't have enough guns, but I've got to buy more guns and they can reinforce up at, at Providence. So we'll do that. I just want to get my troops as con concentrated as possible. There's no likely enemy assault on, on Hartford for the moment, at least not till the map expands, which will happen, but not quite yet. So let's concentrate as many troops as we can around Providence. There's my plus 10 reputation. And then you can see the enemy's about to get 750 new reinforcements. So I suppose maybe it's a good idea right now while we can. Let's go ahead and, and just push these troops out, actually, rather than reinforce. I know we're a little bit strung out, so that makes me a little uneasy about this, but... Let's go ahead and move our troops toward Middleborough. Maybe the extra 400 troops can come up and get there in time. But there's only 280 troops there. It looks like the two battered garrisons that were at Providence and at Newport have both sort of retreated to Middleborough, which must have been unoccupied previously. So I would I would like to take the moment that the British are giving oh, there's that the British are giving us and try and just overrun Middleborough as quickly as possible. Because eventually the goal is going to be to Boston and while we, to be to take Boston. And while we definitely do not have enough troops to do that yet, 
if we can take Middleborough, that gives us more sort of production resources and other things like that on the map to deal with Boston. Also prevents the British from being able to add that many that many more troops, right? Like, right, any casualties they lose here are soldiers that are not deployed as, against us when they do bring all their troops south. So how are we doing ammunition conditioning wise? All right, let's try and melee them. Still not sure why it's not triggering a battle. There's the 720 reinforcements intelligence told us about. I'm guessing once they arrive, they will move south. Maybe to try and take Middleborough. These troops are going to garrison Providence. All right, so we basically... Oh, nice, they surrendered. I don't know that I've ever seen enemy troops surrender before. Not on the strategic map, anyway. Are those guns we can take? What is this? Dropped equipment and supplies that we can capture. Okay, so we get plus six, whatever that was. Middlesbrough is almost ours. The enemy's reinforcements have arrived, so they do have about 4,000 troops there. Benjamin Lee's troops have no officer. Middlesbrough should be ours any minute. And it is. All right, so... Enter the garrison, boys. Let's see what we have. We definitely don't have 4,000 troops yet. So I cannot assault Boston quite yet. But Middlesbrough was captured, and now I've got 92 reputation. So that's good news. We've got about half the enemy strength that they've got at Boston. Now here's the reason that we pulled everybody sort of south here. Portsmouth, isolated, not something we can defend, especially not until the map expands further north, which I think happens in June. Leicester is isolated. Yes, it's on the direct route to Boston, but just sort of taking a step back. If we go to the, the supply map here, you can see Bo Leicester has a supply to nowhere. There's no entry point for supplies to Leicester. So it doesn't really, like, it helps the enemy if they can link it, but it doesn't really help us. Our main supply flows through Hartford into Newport to Providence to Middlesbrough. So that is sort of the reason we've advanced along the direction that we have. Boston is the next link in the chain, but again, we don't have anywhere near enough troops to take Boston at the moment. So we'll have to build our forces up. We can't do that until we unlock the quartermaster research item. And we are two days away from unlocking the quartermaster department. Honestly, I think I'll spend two prestige to speed that along. I didn't really understand how you could do that before, but here I can save two days, spend two prestige, and then our prestige up here drops from 90 to 92. Prestige will influence, I believe, like how many recruits want to join you, like the amount of support colonies will give you. If it gets too low, it can hurt you. You can get fired if it goes all the way to zero. But basically, it's a, it's a mana or easy button in terms of bringing in um, additional uh, additional uh, stuff, right, research items. So I just increased our weekly salary, which also influences uh, how much we're spending, obviously, for every troop uh, that we spend, but it also influences unit morale. So we get better morale if we increase our salary. B bounties influence recruiting. So right now we have no recruitment bonus at a bounty of one. We were to increase that to, say, one five, you can see here. Then we get a, a, recur, a recruiting bonus of 20%. Uh, recruits are drawn from different cities. So if you click here, you can see Middlesbrough has zero enlisted recruits right now. Out of a pop We've got 14,000 people working here, zero recruits, 25,000 slaves. Providence has 9,000 workforce, zero recruits, 1,600 slaves. Hartford is our biggest city at the moment with 20,000, 450 recruits, and 3,800 slaves. I don't know. I think the enlisted, like I think the recruits have to be in the city that you're in to draw the reinforcements, I think, but don't quote me on that. Um, 
And then like as troops get sick, as they die, as you lose men, you need you need those recruits to bring in bring in new reinforcements. So that's another thing to consider. But the spending of the prestige for the um, quartermaster department will trigger on the start of the next day, which is going to be April 27th. You know, the British are sending 1800 re more reinforcements to Boston. So that's great. 1800 more troops for us to deal with. We're fucked. <laughs> that's how it feels anyway. Um, but yeah, all of our recruits are being drawn into reinforcing the troops that we currently have, and we don't have enough guns. So now that we've done the quartermaster thing, this market tab opens up. The market tab can be used to buy more weapons. So you can see we've got 1,300 civilian muskets in stock. There are, eight, there are 2,000 on the market. Um, there are also 83 Charlevilles, which are, I don't know if these are rifles or just, it's a superior flint rock musket loading smoothbore French pattern 1777. How's that a pattern 1777 when it's 1775? I don't know. Uh, slightly smaller, but sturdier than the British Brown Bess. Okay. So it has a much better efficiency and melee trait, I think, than the civilian musket. Yeah, civilian muskets melee is half. Efficiency is ha like three less. So efficiency of the civilian musket six. Charles Levy is 50% is higher at nine. Reload is 15 here. Reload is 15 here. So reload's the same. Melee is 35 versus 18, so almost double shell of me, or however you pronounce that. Um, there's the short pattern brown best, which is for cavalry. There's the brown best, which is the primary weapon that the British use, I believe. Um, and you can see here, even better melee, slightly less efficiency than the French gun, but better reloading. And then there's the Spanish 55, which is uh, worse at melee slightly, but in a kind of meaningless way, worse at reload. Um, and then about the same efficiency. So, um, you know, these are different weapons you can spend money on. I don't have any companies, I don't think, that can be equipped with these 88 men. That's too low. That's low, smaller than any of our companies at full strength. Um, we've captured 79 brown besses, I believe, from the British in, in various battles. We can buy eight more for 200 gold, you can see up here. So I guess I might as well do that just to sort of keep as much in stock there as possible. There are also cannons. So you can see we've used all of our Galloper guns. I think you start with four, um, but we've, we have none in storage. There's 14 on the market. So let's go ahead and buy four more. Maybe that'll allow us to equip that artillery unit. You can see we're spending our gold up here, um, and there's 10 more on the market. The, the three-pound Galloper gun is a light support gun for increased mobility. But anyway. Um, meanwhile, the quartermaster item hasn't influenced the army recruiting yet. We can get a new project here, so we can basically either choose to do the engineering department or we can go down the project tree here. Um, there's different options. Continental army is kind of important to get to because that allows you to recruit fusiliers, which are basically regular infantry. Right now, we don't have that. So I think we will try and go down that tree. To do that, we've got to do Army Innovation, which is 41 here. So that's going to take 41 days. We can accelerate it by doing the um, using our prestige up or reputation up. That's a considerable reputation hit. But I think we will do that. Again, this is kind of the easy mode, if you will. You can see we're spending a bunch of reputation to get Army Innovation in one day. But then that allows us to start working toward um, the... Uh, the Continental Army, or toward Benedict Arnold, which I believe would give us another general and allow us to have more than one field army. Meanwhile, our quartermaster-in-chief is going to be Samson Byrne. He seems to be the best option there. Uh, project for him, let's just work on having supply wagons. We need that. Not going to spend any reputation there. We're going to wait the 34 days on that one. Okay, uh, that's done. Meanwhile, can the prophet, can this unit get a new officer? How do you do that? Benjamin Lee is, I guess, is he wounded? Is he dead? He's all red. I'm assuming this means he's dead, but I, I don't know. Because he's gone now that I click on Jay Richardson. You can see the efficiency hit on this unit is incredible. A huge hit because our soldier, our officer is dead. That goes, that gets better once we assign his replacement. All right, so I'm assuming we'll have enough guns now that we've purchased those weapons. Maybe it'll kick into effect tomorrow. 
Once those British reinforcements arrive, though, I kind of expect them to move south and come get us. There you can see our uh, army report. Our army size limit just went up. So we can go ahead and go back to Hartford where there's actually some recruits here and recruit a new militia regiment. Except I don't have any officers to do to uh, to lead it. So I can't actually recruit them because without officers to lead them, they are helpless. So that sucks. Um, does the item that we're really working on now give us anything along those lines? Just better unit provision. Okay. There's different research items you can do which give you more officers as well. So we may have to we may have to wait on that. Which is kind of we're back in the same position that we're, we were in before now. We've got an enemy force that is overwhelming numbers in front of us. And no real prospect for us to, to remedy that. Perhaps if we can bring Evans down, we might be able to expand the size of that unit. Can we expand any of these units? No. No. Interesting. So, so these Fusilier units, we could add another company to. You can make Fusilier units larger. To add another company beyond this would cost reputation, which I'm not interested in doing, but I will gladly... I can't add artillery to them for some reason, but I can go ahead and add another 240 men to each of those Fusilier regiments, which should should help a little bit. The militia units, apparently, we cannot do that to. If I wanted here, you could see we could add another one, but then that would cost... I don't even know what that would cost. Why does it show me a little star, uh, star icon? I'm assuming that means reputation. Didn't actually cost anything. As far as I can tell, we do lose some efficiency because they're, I'm assuming because they're green recruits, but we just added 240 more, actually 480 more men to our army by doing this. Now they do need recruits so that they can train and stuff. So it's going to take a little while to build them up, but yeah, I mean, anything, anything we can do to improve the quality of our army. And not just the quality, but the size. They've got 1,800 troops coming here. So the fact that we were able to give ourselves 480 more men, I, th I think, is important. Hartford, meanwhile, needs a recruiting house. I can't build that until the engineer item is researched. I'm going to assume they won't move everything they have in Boston down on me, which might give me a better chance in a battle, like if they only bring... 4,000 troops south, obviously my odds are better. But with 1,800 additional reinforcements, you got to think they're going to feel confident in moving against us. Meanwhile, the army project is finished. So we go back here to the headquarters. You can see that's done. So I can either go toward general in limit one increase and also get Benedict Arnold, which will take 53 days, or the Continental Army, which will allow me to re research... Fusiliers and artillery companies, which I think is what we will do. Other items reduce research speed, which feels important. Engineer, actually, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the engineering department because that's only 10 days. And it will allow me to start building stuff, which I don't think I can do until after I get the engineering department. So I need the engineering department. Army management... I don't know why the regiment screen is empty. I don't understand that. Three pound galloper guns. You say that. And yet we have four in storage, so I don't know if it's just a timing thing or what. Meanwhile, let's see what the enemy does when their 1800 troops arrive here. Is this red? So we've got 5,600 troops in Boston. And at least some of them are coming out. Some of them appear to be marching on Leicester. Which is unoccupied, so that would not shock me for them to do that.
You'd, you'd certainly think they'd take Leicester and Portsmouth, unoccupied cities. As long as they don't move from Leicester to Hartford and into our rear, that's fine. Hey, we get 450 new troops at Leicester. I think. Or no, they were raised at Hartford. Okay. Yeah, move those move those troops out of the garrison. And get up to the front, because I need as many troops as I can. Also, I really need Evan's troops to get get out of this area and head toward Providence. But Lester's gonna fall to them. Even though they pulled those troops out of Boston, doesn't really lower the amount of, you know, the ability to lower their numbers enough for me to do anything with. Does it not tell you how many guns are in a unit? I don't understand that. Why shouldn't it should tell you how many guns are in a battery? Maybe the recruits draw from everywhere, because it... I don't know. Seems like maybe they do. You know, Evan's boys are going to enter the Providence garrison. And while I'm not concentrating the Providence and Middleborough garrisons together, that's because they're close enough to support each other if we do decide to drive on Boston. Meanwhile, this unit, we can expand the Fort Smith Militia. So let's go ahead and what are they currently? They've got, let's go ahead and add some more militiamen. I can't add the fourth company. My general rule of thumb is if I've got a unit that can have up to four companies, three will be infantry, one will be artillery, which I can do with any of the newly raised units, but apparently not, not this one. So that'll be another three, 450 troops by adding the, or no, we added two more companies, right? So that'll be another 300, 300 troops. With potential strength to our forces. Assuming I still can't raise anyone. I don't have any officers to assign. Portsmouth was lost. Research a project. All right, so in, I'm supposed to research the engineering department, which I will have in eight days. That'll give me 10 more prestige. Lester was also lost. So they sent troops to Lester and Portsmouth. I'm hoping they won't send directly to Hartford. That would be a, pretty much a disaster if we were to lose Hartford. It is by far our... Can I just... You don't need a commander, just... Give me a freaking garrison there, a small garrison. I don't want to detach any of these troops there. All right. So another 450 troops arrived at Providence. Maybe we should drive toward Leicester. I'm guessing the enemy won't have a large force there. Probably leave a small garrison, small-ish garrison there. Maybe pull a thousand troops out of Middlesbrough and 900 out of Providence. Meanwhile, changes in the international relations, which I don't really understand that. Pennsylvania units have been raised at Hartford. I guess we'll keep them there for the moment. I still don't have enough troops. I mean, they got 5,000 men here. Even if I get another 450, still puts us a thousand short. Tensions arising between the French and the Creek Indians, Britain and France, Cherokee and Iroquois and Spain and Cherokee. I don't know how any of that matters. But with that being said, guys, uh, we've been going for pretty much an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. This is our sort of return to ultimate general American revolution. Let me know you guys if you guys are enjoying this, if you think I'm doing any better than I was doing before. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, thanks again for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.